welcome everybody. It's 6.30, having a quorum. Uh, I call the regular meeting, uh, the regular January 2020 meeting of the uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors to order. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the mic won't pick me, yeah, the, the mic won't pick me up unless it's right there. My, <laughs> my voice really doesn't carry at all. Um, uh, do I hear uh, adjustments to uh, to the agenda? I wanted to add uh, um, one we, planet. Without Carrie, without Carrie, if she doesn't show up. Well, if we see her, adjust uh, it at that. You want to adjust it at that time? If we see yeah. well, I think we have to. I think we have to adjust it at the big. Is well, it the he Robert's can be tabled if she's not here. Yeah. So why don't we add so it and yeah. then we can yeah. table? Right. That's that's the, the, that, that, that's a fine suggestion. So let's add a. The building report. That. Right. It has to do with she's. I, she was looking at that and she's wondering about if everything moved space. to the elementary building. Would there be enough space for the <laughs> kind of program? And I think she's jumped a little ahead of, of the whole, the whole uh, process. But we all do that in this in this discussion. I think at one point in time or another. Um, so let's add her as a discussion item 9.3, uh, one planet uh, uh, building update. Can you add stock for generator? <laughs> Um, I certainly can at Stockbridge Generator at, 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 at uh, item point 9.4. I wanted to add the annual report and an update from the building committee progress. That's okay, those, that on there already? So yeah. Awesome. I didn't cool. read the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're all safe. Luckily, there. Christy could read your mind. <laughs> 9 1 and 9 2. So now we have a 9 3 and a 9 4. Do we have any other What's adjustments? 9 3, uh, nine three was the uh, one planet uh, uh, building discussion, and 9 4 was the, um, generator. the generator discussion. Okay. You have nothing to add, Ed? Ed, Ed <laughs> Bruce, you're, you're good? Do we have a uh, principal? Just under my report, I'll say a couple things. Okay. Do we have a principal? There is no principal's report. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, all righty then. So uh, uh, with those adjustments to the agenda made, we need to assign a, a, a timekeeper and kind of bust out some times to these sorts of things. You, sir, have done a, have done a, have done a, a good job of, of reining us in and, and letting us <coughs> ramble as, as it felt appropriate. So. Uh, do you want me to estimate now? Yeah, let's just kind of. Adjustments to agenda five, sign time for five, public comment. We, we usually do that for pass. 10, don't we? 10. Same with board comment. I have an agenda. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Oh, that's mine. I'm sorry. Minutes is minutes, I, five minutes. Yeah, I think we do that in five. Uh, board comments, give it ten. Yeah, at the outside. What's to the board superintendent? Just ten minutes. Ten. Policy review. There's three of them, maybe five minutes of policy, 15, 15. minutes. Uh, building committee update, 20. Sure. <coughs> and report committee, I probably got 15. Got some stuff to okay. share. Action item none. Yep. Zero. We have no action items apparently. Uh, public comment. <coughs> Let's give it five plus if needed. Other uh, executive session personnel in the sense of that. Bonnie and Lindy. It's I'm not them. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you for you. That's for us. Because I've got one too. Okay. Oh, you have them. Uh, okay. Uh, what do you need to produce? Ten? Five. Five. Well, I don't know whether I'll... Yes. Five. <coughs> session. Five. Okay. All right. So let me just... Did you want any time for 9.3 and 9.4? Oh, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, we gave... Oh, 9-3? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. What was the 9-3 <laughs> was the, the carry issue, the one planet discussion, and 9-4 was the generator. So let's, let's put them down for 10 each. 10 each, thank you. Okay. How much did you give the building committee update and the annual? 20. 20, 20, 20 for the building and 15 for the annual. 15 for the annual. Thank you. Okay.
All right. So uh, we are now moving into item four, the first public comment session. Anything? Okay, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, uh, consent agenda, we have attached uh, uh, minutes from the November 5th and the December 3rd meeting. Uh, for approval, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, packet. You, you found something that... Well, just to clarify, let me find it again. Here we go. Um, so it, just to clarify, um, let's see, this would be December's minutes and at the very end with um, There are not 10, November minutes in here. One, one. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I just want to note in the second or third sentence where it says in Rochester, the money has been endowed to the town. Um, to clarify, and I'm not sure how uh, much we're going to put in the notes, but Stockbridge was endowed money to Stockbridge School. Correct. Rochester was endowed money to Rochester School. Rochester was endowed money to Rochester Town. What the letter we were writing to the trustees of public funds is requesting money that was endowed to Rochester Town. Correct. And I just felt that it, um, I just didn't think that it clarified it that there was a separation between Rochester School money and Rochester Town money. We were asking for town money. Uh, let's change the, uh, uh, as a friendly amendment, why don't we change the minutes to say we are asking the town for a disbursement of town funds instead yes. of for a, quote, gift? Yeah. Is there, do you have two under there or just one? And that was it. Otherwise, I All right. wonderful as well. So uh, I would entertain a motion actually to approve. It's just the December minutes that are in the packet. Um, I think we approved November's at the last. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was I was uh, actually looking through the December moments minutes to see. Yes, we did. Um, uh, so uh, the 5.11, Ethan made a motion. Uh, Megan's accepted the minutes were approved. So we are actually just approving the December 3rd minutes. Um, uh, all those in favor of approving, um, actually, did I, did I get a motion in a second? I'll second. Just accepting the minutes. Did, did someone make a motion? Do you know? Uh, I would entertain a motion to accept the, uh, the minutes as amended. I make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Motion has been made. Is it seconded? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The December 3rd minutes have been approved as amended. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, board comment? Um, <coughs> sure, go ahead first. Um, uh, until I talked to Don Shaw in the recent couple of weeks, <coughs> I didn't know that you hadn't been going to many of the executive board meetings. I have been to probably about half of them. Mm -hmm. okay. I've been missing them because of uh, personal commitments and other issues. Um, I didn't know that okay. near Bolton. Okay. So I know it's your communication. <coughs> Uh, well, yeah, and I've also heard about communication with Bonnie sometimes, not you not getting back to her. Okay, that I, that I can't think of, but okay. okay. But, I mean, that's something between you, but I just, um, I, how am I going to know when to be there? Because clearly I don't want to be missing and we need to be present at the Sure. Um, in, I, I, in, in general, the alternate usually attends as well. So oh, okay, that, I didn't know that. Yeah, just that there's there's two. I mean, often there's a board member and an alternate from a couple towns there. Oh, there's one. Well, uh, it depends. I mean, it's, it, okay. it varies I, on availability, I mean, it's but in general, explain to me okay. anyway how that worked. We just sure. sort of made our assignments and never really went over what they meant. Okay. So I just would appreciate communication from you. Absolutely, I apologize, and I'll try to do better. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'd also like to say I'm going to make sure that when I come back from a full board meeting that I give a report to the board so we can all be updated with the minutes. Sure. Know necessarily what's going on, not just the ones that are at those meetings. <coughs> So on that note, at the full board meeting last night, um, we afterwards had a uh, wagon wheel uh, mm -hmm. Rochester Suffrage mm -hmm. board meeting where we were approving our announced tuition rate and we approved it at uh, 16444. 15444. I thought it was 15. Six. Last, it was 3% increase from last year's. Last year's was 5965. <coughs> so it was a 3% um, increase to goal. So that's what we had decided. Mm -hmm. It was a 3% increase over last year, which is the same thing we did um, last year as well. There was room to go up quite a bit higher, but we chose that we did not want to do that. <coughs> Keep kind of with the, the tr yeah the trend the uh, uh, cost of living increase kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know the the. Oh, I've got my file here. Thank you. <laughs> um, in general, we have we have uh, seen in the past that when your tuition is pegged higher, you know, significantly higher or lower than the schools in the area, yeah. you kind of get called out on it. So. Yeah, and that does um, really fall in line with the rest of our um, schools. <laughs> and they were also approving their own um, announced tuitions last night, so I only have from the previous year. Um, but uh, Bethel Royalton for last year was uh, 16 425 mm -hmm. so, for their elementary. And then I think uh, Bruce has the rest of the meeting we'll discuss um, during his part. The yeah, so well, if, uh, do we have any other board comment? Um, also from last night's meeting, um, Tara said our budget won't be in until probably January 20th. So I know mm -hmm. we've made some arrangements that so we'll just skip, we'll make better plans for when we have our budget to do some extra meetings. Yes. Well, usually, I mean, usually she always, they, they, they always think they can, they can get us our, our, our budget. We always get pushed back because we're, we're the later annual meeting. So, but we did um, agree at the last meeting to um, mark on our, excuse me, calendars the, um, the 13th and the 23rd. So everybody please make sure that is mm -hmm. marked on your calendars. So we don't know when she's going to. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. It's not like she's going to have a with the 20th. 20th. Yeah. So it right. Just to keep that, yeah, we keep that in mind that we already. Sorry, for the budget, okay. for our budget. The January twenty third. We had set them. We had them the thirteenth and the twenty third. <coughs> With and, the last meeting. Right, and the the thirteenth can't happen because you can't do it till the twentieth. But the twenty third and. Is up. <coughs> we had it on there first. <laughs> okay. Well. Um, yeah. <laughs> if everybody can just try to be, remain flexible yep. yeah. and know that this is coming. Yeah, and we had said, uh, the, the minutes reflect that we thought it would be in Stockbridge on the, the, the 23rd. Does that still what we want to do? So we had Rochester for the yeah. 13th and Stockbridge for the 23rd. Right, and if we're not going to, if we're not going to Rochester, I mean, do we, I think it was just because we were alternating, I assumed. Yeah, so probably. if there's anyone who has a preference for, for one location or the other for the 23rd. I have no preference. So. Yeah, I'm sorry to come in here. Keep it at Stockbridge. If your next regular meeting is at Rochester. Yeah, so since it'll be the next. We yeah. discussed that both then it rotates between. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Yep. So then let's, uh, let's leave it uh, as minuted. Uh, tentative meeting 630 here on the 23rd. Okay. All right, uh, any other board comment? Bruce, superintendent's report. So I got, got about four things. Uh, first, the two budget tax, uh, it is, uh, we spent a lot of time last week trying to get it down. Uh, I knew that it was around 9% and that wasn't gonna fly for anybody. Um, it's up 4.6% and largely because we are now budgeting for the HRAs that 
everybody has, and I don't think that was <laughs> properly budgeted in the past. Uh, we're not budgeting it at uh, the full amount of them, not 100%, more like 64%. Um, and that seems to be what other <coughs> managers are doing around the state. Um, you, you do budget that some people won't take them, and therefore, you know, and that's, we're currently at about 46, 46%, uh, but we believe it'll grow. So, now also, remind me when we make a contribution to an HRA, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 not a, it's not like a professional, a professional development budget line item where we budget this much and they can take whatever they want to take contractually and it might be higher or lower, but it's a best guess and we pay whatever they actually use. The HRA um, contribution, we set whatever that is and that goes into the system right. and whether they draw it down or not leads to us having a surplus for the next year, correct? Yes. Right. And that's the reason um, we thought we'd try to be realistic. <coughs> we may have some extra at the end and we can use that for next year. Right, right. I just want us to be careful that we don't, you know, keep 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 rolling extra, you know, I mean, I know this is the first year and, and, and you know, we, we don't have to worry about that, that now, but I just, just want us to make sure that we're tracking it so we're not. Tara's making sure. Just look for trends, she's trying to say. Cool. The other two areas of we need we had needs where <coughs> we have a, a new uh, full-time uh, accountant uh, mm -hmm. rose heeman she started on monday she has been the town administrator for royalton comes to us with over 10 years of experience in accounting uh, in this whole county so she was we were delighted that she was interested and she was if she she didn't go to come to us she was going to go somewhere else because they <laughs> being utilized uh, excessively mm. by the town of Royalton. So she went in there as an accountant and then just kind of her skills and her responsibilities expanded like crazy. So Bruce, can you remind me, was this a position that existed or was this created for her? This was, um, the executive board had given us permission to go looking for an accountant because we uh, we had part of the, the money covered in the budget. We were also paying Marilyn Frederick, and she's going to be leaving. She's not doing that many hours now, and she will be leaving totally pretty soon. <clears throat> so this was a way of kind of stopping that and, and putting something in the budget. We think we're at full strength now. Um, we were looking originally for a, an accountant and a half. We don't believe we're going to have to hire the half, but we also know that Ann will be leaving in uh, the spring and it's going to drop down to a partial position and we're going to have to hire a payroll person then. So, you know, there's there's some fluidity, I guess you would say, in, in uh, the positions at, at the SU. Ann's been there for 32 years, I think. Is this, sorry, so adding this account, and maybe you made this clear already, but adding this account to the position, is that part of the 4.6 increase? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's not, I mean, it's not, uh, part of it's that, and part of it we already had. Okay. Because we had to fill it. It's a portion of our position that right. was added. So now that we've hired. She's full time. I mean, I don't want, I want to make that clear. Yeah. She's full time. And now that we've hired that accountant, does that mean we're not paying um, the auditors anymore for, for their accountant consultancy roles, uh, all that money we were paying them? What they've got to come back, I think, one more time uh, for a day or two. Uh, but no, they're going to be easing away, too. Um, uh, I think you should have a lot of confidence in your books. Uh, they should be really clean and know where all your trust funds are and how much they are. And well, our restricted accounts, that's still, that's been our biggest right. question going well, forward is, is, not, is our surplus a real surplus or is it the commingled uh, 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 restricted right. accounts? All that is, um, I'm expecting we'll have, I don't want to give any dates because every time I say that, they, they don't meet those deadlines. And, uh, but I think, you know, basically the, the budget process last night was a little bit difficult. Uh, some second thoughts about mm -hmm. some of the boards about what 
voting on this, and, and they, you guys were there, so yeah, don't yeah. say it any way you want us. I wanted to um, ask you a question about that. I know there was one representative, Andrews or somebody, um, Joe, yeah. who seemed to think that there was one of the only wiggle rooms that was in the SU budget was the idea of how much we budgeted for these HRAs, and then we could bring that down from 65, maybe to 60, maybe to 55, to to free up more money. I know they've got a big deficit to make up. I know yeah. Um, what do you think of that idea? I I have to uh, lean on the auditors for the advice that we've been given. I mean, they do this work all the time, and and. Uh, I have to remind you that this was Tara's field before she came to us. And yeah. So if she's strong in anything, it's that. Yeah. It's insurance. It's so stick with the 65. And I think, yeah, I think, yeah, we've been given that advice, and I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable that that's I, good advice. I, I know one of the biggest things we will be talking, people will be talking about at our meeting, as they always do, is the SU budget. It's one of the things I want to address oh, in the annual report. Is that. I'm sorry, I want to make it very clear, that's in the past, so I do think we need to make it very clear and probably should put it out in the paper that, that <coughs> then the full board and executive board are voting on the SU budget, that people can go to those meetings. Because I think there's people in our towns who would be very interested to go to those meetings while it's happening. Because also often, right, we get to the I think we, we get to one, our board meeting. I think we had one person from the outside yeah. last night during the yeah. Well, and I just think teacher. I, I don't think it's it's made clear, and I think it's as important to people because then it takes a lot of pressure off us or some. If we've advertised it well, then people know, hey, this is where you can go and look at these numbers when they're being voted on and have your input. Well, truth be told, we know whether we're going to get a pass last night or not, or yeah. we're going to have to go back and cut some more. I mean, uh, I pro pretty much. Last Thursday, Tara and I sat in a room for about four hours and just nickeled and dimed it until we got down to, I said, i got to get under 5%. There's no way in the world that we're going to have be able to put that in front of somebody. And, um, and I don't know, maybe, you know, it, we could have kept going, but it would have probably been people, you know, pretty soon. So um, consistently, is that budget voted on early January? Is it usually late December, usually yeah. late, late this December. time, and I think there's a little anxiety on the board members that we need to, that needs to be passed before we know yeah. what the assessment is in your other budgets <laughs> for that. So um, I don't think we're horribly late. We would have been maybe a little more risky if we had put it off last night, mm -hmm. but you know, I was, you guys were debating that, and I was just kind of sitting back and saying, whatever it is, it'll be. You know, Okay. Uh, the special ed budget passed as well. Um, that was up more, um, 9.2%, I think, or something like that. Um, eight million dollars, isn't it? Yeah. North of yeah, eight. Um, it's, um, and the whole discussion was whether or not to be realistic or to hedge it and hope that we won't incur some of the costs that, because you don't know which kids are going to be served and where they're going to be served. And it's just kind of a guesstimate uh, on that. So well, one thing with the special ed budget is that they uh, kind of reassess it every, is it quarterly? Quarter, so, mm -hmm. so if there's movement in the district of a child moving out, that, or there's less services needed, then our assessment will be less. We won't, so it's not that we'll be charged that full. It will be an actual charge. It will be an act, the actual charge. So we're going with those. Better to prepare for it to, on the high side, and hopefully it's lower. And then and they also explained really there wasn't much choice. Right. It was all mm -hmm. new. I asked her point blank, yeah. is there any choice in this except for the estimation of the fact of the actual costs? They're all, they're all out of our control. Is that true? Um, that's what we were told about. That's kind yeah. of a, I mean, that, that's what speeds, that's what's said. I'm not sure that's always true. Um, and I'm a former special educator, so maybe I feel a little better about that than other people do. Uh, Would you be able to identify areas? Because certainly they. The thing is, you just don't know 
what's going to happen in a year with a, with a special needs student. They may bomb out of a class and have to get placed. We're trying, that's one of the reasons why we try to expand the restored program because with Act 173 coming, they want us to have our own grown, homegrown programs rather than, and a lot of these places that cost $100,000 a year, place a kid are just not going to be possible because you're going to be given a lump sum of money and you're going to have to live in it, live within it. That's what's going to happen. Uh, it'll be a block grant kind of thing. And uh, so the Secretary of Education has told us, you need to build your own programs. And that's, and so we're following through. We've just expanded the middle school program at Bethel so that we can accommodate more kids. Uh, probably like five or six more kids, but we have a waiting list of kids that need to get in there. So. Are they all in district or something? Every, everybody that's in there is in, dis, in SU. In uh, SU. In SU. But that, mm -hmm. is that a place, because I'll be working with them. I mean, those teachers are really exciting and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, Is that a place where we could take out of district students? We could, yes. And, and we can make money <laughs> if we do that. Uh, we've kind of been on the mindset, because the program's only, well, it's 2015 when we started this. It's only, uh, and the middle school program has only been open, I think this is the second year, the third year, second year. Um, but we've already outgrown it, the space we were in, and we've, we've basically moved to a bigger classroom so we could handle some more kids. Um, but, but, and the possibility is that we can take some kids from out of district and start charging. Do Which will lower your assessment. Do other districts have a store classroom? They do. They have a classroom, but it's not. The return rate to the to uh, the regular population, and this was the stipulation all along that we didn't want it to be a last destination for kids. We wanted them straightened out, worked with, and then returned back into their regular environment. Uh, since we opened in 2015, we've been 41% of the kids have gone back to class in their home buildings, Chelsea, Tunbridge. Is that good? It's, it's huge. On the, I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but you're talking about kids that are, you know, throwing chairs and biting people and, and all kinds of things. And so the re Bill just came out with his book, actually, uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, and I have a copy of it. but. What I'm afraid of is other districts are going to steal him away, and uh, because he's had so much success, 41% um, for kids like we're talking about are, is a huge number, and uh, uh, so, and it's allowed. I'm, I know I'm taking way too much time, here, but it's allowed. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's allowed allowed the buildings to get settled down because these kids now have people working with them. The run-of-the-mill teacher doesn't have the skills on it with behavior that the people that the bills trained everybody. You know, we haven't sent them away. We, you know, the kids, uh, the, the teachers have been trained. He's been very careful about who he's hired. Um, and Deb said that he's really excited about the DI because the teachers are really excited about it. Right, and right. It just gives us, it just gives us another tool. Yeah. You know, and and. Uh, I, heard, I think I heard from either Megan or Amy that at one point you were trying to get some money to build a space. Yeah. Is that, um, is that dead? Well, it's it's not dead, but it's it's not active space. right now. I think we yeah. well, I, like we threw that out there. Well, the issue the issue, and I know this has come up before, that is that program. these kids need to be with their peer group, and especially like the seventh and eighth graders, and. Getting them over here and putting them in the old high school building or the high school building takes them out of that. It, it, it isolates them. And uh, so. But what about elementary students? Because you have a restorative program. We have two South programs at Royalton right now. So One's a K through two program, the little guys. And the other is uh, three through five, I think. Yeah, and I, I mean, we had an elementary school with a building with great outdoor mm -hmm. access, and 
think it's something we should really think about for the future. Well, especially when the other option is building somewhere else. Deb actually came, Deb Matthews actually came to Rochester, and she's actually looked at the space a year ago. And the dilemma at that point was the majority of the youngsters in the classroom were from the far edges of the supervisory union. Like Chelsea. They were anticipating about an hour and 20 minutes on a bus one way. And could we do two, I mean, could, you do, could we run two, like uh, one centralized to the South Royalton area and one more on this edge of the district? Because we are a huge district. And I know that we have a child, I don't know how many children we have, but we send children there from Rochester. So I feel that. Students should be able to travel the, the other 45 way. minutes to our, to our direction. Yeah, yeah. We're sending, I don't know how many kids are on our bus going. For restorative? For restorative. Oh, okay. So, if I think it's a. I'm not sure. I, I, don't even, I don't even know that number, right? Maybe you guys do. But I know that there is. So. I really said it's that many. I said one. Just one? Just one? Oh, one. One from Stockers, one from. And I'm having some, because Bethel's just a hop, skip, and a jump over the mountain, not too, too bad. Too. How many do you send to Bethel? From to Bethel, go to the restorer. But that's, mm -hmm. they would, I would consider Bethel oh, more in our neck of the... You know, the program's not huge. It's, it's probably, uh, I think there's five at the middle school right now. There's five or six in each of the classrooms in Royalton. Uh, and they have, I mean, they've got like three staff members in with them, you know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, at one of our, at our November uh, meeting, I'd asked Deb, and she, in, in November 25th, there was uh, five in the K through two program. There was six in the three through five program, mm -hmm. and five in the six through eight program. Okay. So the six through eight is going to now expand for probably close to 10, because we have a waiting list of seven for those kids. Okay. Uh, they're not all, it's not one size fits all, but we're gonna, um, if we send them to East Valley Academy, which is one of the cheaper placements, that's $50,000. And for a kid that's on a 504 plan and isn't a coded special ed kid, we don't get any state funding. So you guys have to pay that out of your pocket. It's probably 37,000 for tuition and another well, if it's, five, no, if it's 504, Bethel and Royalton pay it out of their pocket. That, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying. <laughs> I say you guys, like the big you guys. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, just wanted to make, I just wanted to make sure. Well, you were yeah, starting to clarify sped, sped, sped coding versus, uh, or sped reimbursement versus right. 504 so coding. you can't get that, and uh, all the more reason. And as long as we keep a 50% or 60-40% uh, in the restorative program, those kids can use the special ed formula, even the 504 kids, to pay for that. So it's not a, a, a huge cost on the local district to send somebody to restorative, but it would be if you sent them out of district. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and quite frankly, the, the work that Bill's done, I want to keep him busy <laughs> because he's finding results, you know, with, with them. Uh, so anyway, the, the auditors gave out a report last night. I don't know whether any of you have it, but it was given out yeah. to everybody. And, and I told you about Rose Heeman. We started on Monday, so that's my report, unless you have any questions. Um, I'd like to say from last night, I was happy to see the literacy results for the STAR 316, and I'm just really happy to see that the FMP. I just want you to know it was FMP, not STAR Oh, so, okay, FMP results. Okay. We started at 42 percent of our kids were on, on grade level on proficient. Uh, we're now up into the 50s with only four months invested. So uh, it's it was a, really good. It was nice to see <laughs> there have last been night. 27 kids that have gotten proficient since we started in September. 27 more than there were. Now those kids might have been right on the edge, you know, yeah, sure. uh, but a lot of the kids that were really in we are, shape are getting we are 20 minutes. We are 20 minutes. She brought it up. I didn't. I, I didn't say that was a positive thing last night. We've done everything else we did. Oh, we got that. Those are the last ones. Thank you. Thank you.
All right. You had to stop talking as soon as I popped the truck in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to help speed us up. <laughs> um, so we have um, been asked to consider uh, uh, three policies. Um, yes. Um, we uh, uh, it's a policy on <coughs> students uh, 18 year old uh, or, or older. Um, there is a policy on field trips. And there's a policy on therapy dogs, which is uncoded. Um, as I understand it, we can't, we cannot approve these policies tonight because they weren't specifically warned. So policies have to be warned by name, I believe, so that public know that they're attending a meeting for a policy about firearms or whatever. There will be a once you guys have seen these. There will be a something put in the paper okay, to warn all of okay. them, and Great. won't adopt them until that last. Yes, no, that was made. That, that, that was the point I was making: is that we we cannot we cannot yeah, adopt these policies. <coughs> um, which I can't do, fool the public. Which I do want to kind of comment on the last set of policies that we reviewed. We had some very minor adjustments too. Yeah. The problem is, is that um, the policy committee is trying to have the same policies throughout the whole district. Mm -hmm. So we adjusted those policies that were potentially already passed, warned and passed by other boards. So therefore, now that policy is not the same wording throughout the whole district. So then they have to go back and rewarn that policy with those adjustments. And it's, um, I just kind of put it out there, I didn't really realize that or yeah. know about it. Well, I mean, they don't, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's more of a clerical matter than, I mean, we're allowed to have our policies. We don't have to follow SU policies. Um, right, I think the, the big goal thing, of the SU was right, it's to, to, it's to have right, exactly. as, as, con, as, as consistent as, as, as possible. And a lot of the, the changes that like we've kicked back have been saying things like we want the superintendent or his or her designee to right. approve using a you know local building space use so that we don't have to go to Bruce to get that. Bonnie and Bonnie and, and Lindy can decide if the you know if, if, if they want to have a hunter's breakfast here uh, some some Saturday morning at the start of, 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 of musket season or whatever. Um, you know I, I think so I think it, it, the, the the back and forth is, is is, is clerical. I think when it's the, the, the more confusing conversations have been like the times when we've made our changes and then Sharon's made another set of changes and then other people have approved it as as, as left and then now you've got right. you and know, I, four of them. I, and I think that that, you know, potentially with that, those last set that we approved, that we made a few clerical changes to, it falls in that same realm that now now what, now Sharon's got one, other people next to you have one and now we have one. Now, um, you know, I, I don't know how big of a deal that is with you know, the SU. Deal. No, um, it's not a big deal. And in some cases where you've added punctuation, I'm not taking that back to the committee. That's not worth it. That's a problem, yeah. uh, you know, I just added to the one that they approved and corrected a little bit. Right, and that's and, and it's not something that affects the wording or the meaning of the policy. If right. it affects the <laughs> policy. That's a different story, right. and I will take that back to the policy committee, and it'll come before you revised again. So. Okay. Right. And the other thing that happens is when the when the so the policy committee takes the Rochester Stockbridge one, and the the Sharon one, and the generic one, and mush them together and reapprove it. You know, when the, when the full board reapproves that policy, then it's now back to being an SU policy, and we would have to vary it ourselves. So we would be back. We wouldn't have to re revote it. Right. You know what I mean? So we just have to say, oh, we don't like what that change that the policy committee made, so we're changing it back. So the last set of policies that we um, uh, made amendments, those still need to be put in the paper, and and we have a final. Correct. Okay. So Thank we're you. not going to. I didn't. We didn't do that because well, was a not everybody's finished. Okay. So I, I, Christy wants to do it all in one fell swoop. Put them all in the paper and say, look. On this date, yeah. we're going to do it, and uh, okay. so we're not just so I understand we're what we're on this. No, no. We're at, what we should do is I read it though. I want to know if you've got any changes. And see, <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie has 
assessment. I'm just going to make one comment to the point that probably it really is in terms of the policy to be crystal clear. Yeah. And this is what we're doing under this particular circumstance. Ideally, what I would recommend when we're all done is that administrators and board members have a policy manual. So yeah. they have a, this is the final, final policy yeah. and everybody has it yeah. at their disposal. Yeah, so I mean, it's on the website. So, I mean, it's all right there. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the comments, I think that, you know, given that we educate children from uh, pre-K through six, um, I think that we should, you know, stay silent or just let the SU adopt the students 18 years or older policy and not really get our, you know, get our fingers dirty in, in, in that at all. Um, you know, the, the, the field trip policy seemed, seemed, seemed pretty clear. Um, do we have any examples of, of other policies about around therapy dogs or where this? So I remember we, when this came up at the policy committee, we were like, "Where did this come from?" Yeah, it was a, it was a uh, internet retrieve, so to speak, um, and uh, we we messed around with it. They wanted to make sure that uh, they had some kind of consistent way of uh, clearing for for dogs. Uh, so we added the um, American Kennel Club Canine Good Citizen Certification and also the Vermont Therapy Dog Registry as consistent ways of approving uh, this. It, I told you before, the reason that this has even come up is because we had people, counselors mostly, bringing in dogs and then uh, dogs were getting in fights oh. with each other. and I. I said to one of them, I said, look, I, I went into this field to, to work with kids. I don't want to work with dogs. And so we had to we had to get some kind of standard so that they would put these these people on leashes. And you've got kids that are afraid of dogs, and you've got kids that are allergic to dogs. And, and so it was a way of, but you can't tell one person to do that and nobody else. So we're right, trying no. to standardize it. Uh, the, the, that makes sense. I, I just, like I said, I just. But it is important that we identify a dog as a therapy dog and not as somebody's pet they are just bringing just to school with them, them, just a good dog that they can keep in their right. office for the day. <laughs> right, no, I mean, the, 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 the question that this was an internet retrieval, we run this by Dina? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess I would, but uh, we, you know, I, I mean, the, the policy committee looked at it and then sent me back to get some changes to it. Right. The things they wanted to see. Right. And I can say I can throw it in front of Dina. That's not a problem. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, that was one of the things I thought we had said at the policy committee when we were first talking about this. Not, Paul, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to make you have to clarify that so clearly on the spot. Um, the standards and procedures paragraph doesn't really talk about standards. It talks about just requesting. Yeah. How to request the dog? And does there need to be a policy for service dogs, or is that already um, yeah, they something that's established? Different. I know they're different, yeah. but is that something? An, that an, an ADA dog. If, if, a, a, you can only ask two questions around an ADA. See if I remember this right. You can only ask two questions around an ADA dog. Is it is it a, a, a trained to assist in a task, and is it helping a, a person with needs or? A, but there's there's the, the service dogs. You can't really have a policy around them because it's the ADA. It's the the, the American <coughs> with Disabilities Act. Right. Let's see if I can look those those up. But yeah, there's there's. Yeah, I know they're different. I just didn't know if we needed to. If, well, the American Disabilities Act allow, gives provisions for um, service animals right. to be anywhere with them. Right. So, right. But this needs to be the therapy dog that hurts them. Well, if somebody decides that the therapy dog is part of ADA, if disability is is psychological. You're going to have a conflict. Well, I think that's why they have to have that certification and staff. Because you're right, there is going to be conflict. But you can say that, but now your dog needs to go through the training just like a 
Right. Well, I've, yeah. I've found so many different organizations that train dogs when I went to try to figure out what are the ones we should be using. And uh, so it just seemed like uh, the American Kennel Club was pretty mainstream, and the other was the Vermont Therapy Dog Registry, which is not a that's not a high bar to pass, but it's there. Yeah. So. But it's, it's, you know, the, the, the animal has to be trained to perform a specific task, like reminding someone to take their medicine or keeping try helping a diabetic know when their blood sugar is low, and it, it must be related to a specific disability. And if, if the animal is, is that, it's ADA, you can't do a thing about it, which is fine. You know, it's, it's there for a reason. But the, the therapy animals and comfort animals are, are different, and we, we can have a policy about that. But yeah, I would see, if we could toss it in front of Dina or see if she already did. Okay. Bonnie, I guess my only thought would be that I know I'm coming in at the 11th hour is that animals outside of therapy dogs, this has the potential for being problematic for school. If there are nine or ten people who decide they want to bring a comfort animal to school, we're going to have some challenges to deal with. Does it give you, I thought I read that it gave you we have some, we have if some. the school administrator determines that a handler does not have control of the therapy dog, the therapy dog is not housework, the therapy dog is not a direct or immediate threat, it gives you pretty good leeway to say that dog out, I think. It does say the animal's presence otherwise interferes with the educational process. I'm, I'm just cautioning the board that it's theoretically oh, yeah. pose problems for us. Could because multiple people the would want to. I'm just thinking of youngsters who are fearful of dogs. There is, so there's seven of them. There is, um, in the, the owner who wants to bring a therapy dog to school must submit a written request form to principal or superintendent. So at that yeah. point, I guess what it does is it doesn't, what are the grounds on which right, yeah. say, you know, what would the dog yeah. denial be? Well, again, these are questions maybe we could be running by Dina because. Well, maybe, maybe we yeah. have the standard that the administrator can say there are too many at some point. Wouldn't it just be easier to say, oh, I'm sorry, I have to stop? Tonight? This time I promise. I'm now. just thinking um, from a family of people with allergies, so I'm uh, right. excited. Um, wouldn't it just be better just to say if it was a, a child that needed it for a year? And just because it was a principal at your school that brought four or five, three or four dogs. And that's where you're going to have a problem, picking and saying to one teacher no and another teacher yes, and then this problem starts. I'm just, that's yeah, well, that's how does this uh, apply? Right, just it's stick with uh, if the child yeah. needs it, well, how not does, with it's a comfort thing. How does this apply to, um, is it one of the SAP counselors that has a therapy dog? It looks not, like the counselor. Yes. <laughs> hmm? Yes. Is it yes. To yes. The so I just, I'm kind of wondering how that gets. That's part of what the question is. Yeah. Just a good dog or a therapy dog? Just so you know, we're at 13 minutes and 15 minutes. Okay. So I guess I'd like some clarity on the solution to it. Or other under control, and I'm thinking of the kids who are looking for control of animals, or other tether, unless they use a, a leash, or other tether that would interfere with the therapy dogs. I'd like it really crystal clear to me, verbal control is not acceptable. I understand that they're very highly trained dogs, but if a child is fearful, that that doesn't dogs will be dogs right. at some point. Well, they are. Okay. And the other thing I had too is, I mean, so I don't want to clarify. You don't know want to deal with a peanut allergy. I mean, right. they're both yeah. exactly. absolutely done. There's no peanuts, and so if a kid has a dog allergy, which could set on a serious allergic asthma attack. I mean, it's got to be clear that that can't happen. It's the same. Well, I, I think, you know, we're, we're, as you pointed out, we're 15 minutes in. We've, yeah. we've, we've come with a, a litany of, 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 of concerns about this policy. So I think, Bruce, you, you accomplished what you wanted to do with this discussion. You got a lot of feedback on that policy, and hopefully we can sort that for uh, before we, we uh, actually have to approve it. Um, so the, we didn't say, I mean, the, the field trip uh, policy, um, Seems seems fairly uh, fairly reasonable. Does anyone have any comments on that? Seems very logical. Brief report, like brief report. 
Yes. Teachers yes. Who like brief report. I mean, do you, uh, do you guys are the administrators that are going to be receiving these field trip requests and, and reports. Is this, does this, does that work for you, or do you have any? If you have any thoughts, can you get them to the policy committee? I think the report is fine. Usually, teachers are well thought out while they're taking field trip. I just don't want it to be redundant. They usually explain why they're connecting it, how they're connecting it, and I think the brief report fixes it. Okay, so then. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Number three needs to be right up there after it's approved. Oh. That's, yeah. that's a good point. Can we do that, Bruce? Can we switch points? And uh, we would. We. I, I agree with Lindy. Yeah. Switching yeah. items two and three. Because <laughs> first comes the request, then comes the permission slips, and then comes the report. Well, the key part about the teachers doing that is some people are very good about it, and others are not. Yes, I'm Thank you. All right, um, that brings us to uh, 9.1, the building committee update. Yep, no, that you sent around. There's a draft that's floating around the committee that still is getting feedback. Um, I think the bigger question at large is, uh, hold on, let me get to my notes here. Um, that we're, we are pretty close to the point where we can't continue to pay to maintain the amount of square footage that we're not using. So we really need to have these community meetings. Because what's happening is a, several of us are sitting there trying to hash out conversations that need to happen with every community member possible at the table. Um, and we need to get this information out to the committees. I mean, we could give you numbers, and that's what's floating around in the draft, is that we, we tried to go back to the charge, which um, was difficult. Uh, in theory, it shouldn't have been, but we all should have known better, I think. <laughs> we started to read the report. We could give you numbers with the report set. Um, it's how you guys want to move forward as a board. And we think we know what some community members want, but we don't know what everybody wants. And if you say the numbers out loud, it's it's gonna it's gonna start a conversation that as many people as possible should be present for. And I just <coughs> also really want to urge the board. And I, I'm happy to share a more detailed summary, but um, not everybody in the committee, we're kind of at a standstill, I guess, about what should be shared out. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess my feedback is we're at the point of adult decisions are starting to have kick consequences. Because we're starting to say, if we keep trying the status quo, and buildings need a lot of work, there's no and those numbers are lost in that report. If we keep the status quo, we're gonna to start to take educational opportunities away from our kids. So there's gonna be kid consequences. And I really, just fundamentally, I struggle with that concept. Mm -hmm. um, so Bonnie and I's recommendation is that we start the community engagement piece now, as soon as possible. Um, like I said, I'm happy to share the draft, but the committee felt like the members of the committee felt like there was more, more to say. We don't want to make any assumptions about how to move forward, but a priority is that we can't keep doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the big can't keep doing is maintain space that's not being used. So um, one of the things I really got out of the building committee was, and the report, um, is that there was no glaring answers. And I think that was, um, th there's no aha, this is what we should do because this makes it sense makes financially. Sense. We didn't have that. Um, and yeah, the report was, um, you know, it, it, was, it was really complicated to, to sit down and try to really, um, you know, hash this all out. And, and like Lindy said, it's, the decisions that we're making have really high like political impact on and, and our on our school budgets and um, they high in, um, in the town politics and then the emotional part of it. Um, but really, we need 
to find out what our communities value for the education mm -hmm. of our kids. What does what does Rochester as a community really value and really want to put resources towards as the education for their kids? What does Stockbridge really value for their for the um, education of their kids? I mean, and it's all our kids, but we do have these two different buildings that, and we need to understand what what the town values really. Mm -hmm. um, so. <laughs> Well, and it's you know it's 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 compounded by the you know there is not a way to you know split or bifurcate you know the the bonding where it could be said that the Rochester buildings are going to cost this much so the Rochester's voters would have to approve that for the buildings in their town and, and the Stockbridge. It's one, you know, uh, Dina did finally, okay. you know, answer me in a, in a very direct fashion. It is it is a district and they are the assets of that district. There is not a way that you could write a, 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 a bonding question or a yeah. bonding issue that would allow the two communities to vote on their own, you know, their, their own bonding amounts. It would be, it would be a bond yeah. okay. uh, 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 for the district. Well, and also, with the community piece of it, I really think that it's time to really get our town officials involved mm -hmm. um, to really know what type of direction the, the town of Rochester is trying to go in. Do they have specific ideas and thoughts for this space? Um, I know we kind of wanted to figure out what we were doing out first and then say, hey, you know, you guys mm -hmm. have any interest, but really we can't be doing this in a vacuum. We really need, we need input from, from our community. Yep. And just to clarify what I think I've just heard, are, are you saying that out of the building committee meetings, um, you don't feel you have um, a way to present this information to the public yet? I mean, we can present, we can, we, we can, we can, we can present, we can present. Can I speak around here? Uh, yeah. So my feeling in this, and I may be the dissent here, this is my own personal subjective opinion, and I pretend to be right, is that this is a tremendously complicated. Oh, the, yeah. the report itself was incredibly dense. The process is really hard. We started with 10 options in one meeting. And, you know, my sense was that a clear understanding of what seemed to come to me is that there are these two different agendas working clearly, two different towns. And how do you, how do you align those? But I don't think we or somebody, maybe not us, hasn't done enough work on this subject because it's so complicated and so nuanced. And, and, and I wouldn't want to go and give this document to the public right now uh, because it doesn't really tell you what these numbers that are in here, they're very speculative. They'll probably be worse. We don't know because they're, you know, it's a general <laughs> overview of all three of them. Um, so I couldn't tell you how to do it, but my, my own sense was that this is being rushed. You know, uh, and you can, you can disagree with me if, if you want, but uh, some people in, in Stockbridge are uncomfortable with the merger. Yeah. And you know, I, that merger was rushed. Yes, that merger exactly. was done, you know, the gun to everybody's head and it was rushed and it was and flawed. And So I'm, I'm feeling here that we are, uh, and, and there are, I, there are things that I think were missed, really important, difficult, thorny issues that have to be dealt with that aren't really dealt with here. So if you went and sat around people in Rochester and said, you know, this is what, you know, here's a, here's a blueprint of what we think or something, it just feels very thin to me. But I don't really have the answer for it. And, and I agree that no perfect answer to it. Uh, it's at all, oh, this is easy, just do this. There's no easy answer in here. So what are the issues that we need to deal with between these two communities before we need to talk about buildings? May I ask you? Sure. How I came out of it, which is similar to what Bob did, we went, we had several meetings, I mean, every meeting, not everyone could, but at the end of each meeting, we did have kind of agreement of what we discussed. And at the last meeting, we did have numbers that we were bringing tonight and we were going to have a report. And he wrote the report up and Bonnie helped her. But because it didn't come out the way certain people wanted it to come out, we're not presenting it tonight. And the reason, that's how I feel. And I don't know if you feel the same way, but I kind of maybe not. But the three numbers that came up were 
that the study that we have the study for was how much does it cost to bring the three individual buildings up to what we think is the minimum safety best spot for education, but the minimum, right? So what are those three numbers? Right. Because they well, deserve to hear. Right, and it's right from the report. That is this yeah, from the yeah. engineers? So, um, and that's what you're asking. Right. Well, actually, it's different than one of them. Yeah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. But it's important, I think. Well, I, 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 I mean, what I'm asking is that you're saying I do, I, I actually agree with you in my soul that there are, you know, if there's leftover feelings that we need to work out about this merger, if there's leftover feelings that we have to, before we can even address the building, I agree with that. I think then the I numbers think, are the reason, are, are, are the what reason? the leftover feelings are. When you hear the numbers, you're going to see why it's we're too uncomfortable. Too right, and that's the cut. It's too so right, we, we did not go, we, we started going through the report thinking, okay, well we can, each one of us can pen pick what type of things need to be fixed and what don't need to be fixed. But it, it is so dense and there's so many of them that to, we really, the bet, we really need to come up with a direction that we want to go first and then sit down and say, okay, do we really need to do this hundred thousand dollar thing? Do we really need to do this fifty thousand dollar thing? Right. And that was that was one of the issues that the committee found with uh, with the report in was that there a lot of the numbers for one involved make this a school building for the next generation. There was not a and, and so one of the issues that, 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 that was that if you pick the max one thing. Right. There was the the um, so then then also just the, the understanding of, of the question became, well, where are we going to be? You know, so we, we, we do this and we bond this out and we make this thing happen and we're you know put aside the politics, but we do that. We're not going to be you know we're going to be looking at a timeline of having a school, you know, renovated in a couple of years, three years, and what's our population going to be? I mean, what, what 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 group of schools are we serving? And so that was one of the numbers that the that the, the committee was having problems wrestling with was was population projections. I um, think that's critical. going back and forth with Tim Pratt all day about this, and he believes the fundamental idea here is that haven't you guys gone beyond your charge as far as the building committee? So haven't you gone? And, and I know how it works. You get in a meeting, you start working on trying to fix things and do things and ponder things, but I'm just asking a question really for him because he's been back and forth with me all day. Right. If you're starting to talk about bonding buildings and things like that, you know, isn't that so the, the well, no, I, I think we were I think we were, we were talking about what, what identify the one person at a time. Sure. So let's go with let's go with Bonnie. Tim might chuckle because there's been times more times when we probably disagree than agree. But I there were a couple times in our building meeting when we acknowledged we went back and revisited our charge. And what I believe our charge was was to better understand the report and present it to our communities. It wasn't to say, let's recommend this, let's do that. I think what, what um, has come, founded us a little bit, and I don't think it's impossible to move through, is that we have some undetermined tools we're trying to work with. One of the first things that um, Cricket McCusker, and I'm sorry, do we, and I always forget his name, Willis, Willis, who both have extensive background in engineering slash building, cautioned us is that the figures in the report could be off by as much as 50% either way. And it would take finances and time to further refine those numbers. So is it really, is something that's listed at a million dollars really a million dollars, or is it 500,000, or is it a million and a half? I don't think the building committee has to resolve that. I think the building committee, perhaps with another meeting to prepare a presentation or whatever, is ready to fulfill its charge. This is what the report says. We're reporting it out. 
I want to restate something that Lindy said. We have, excuse me, we have a sense. Many of us, have, I, I have less of a sense than anybody because I don't live in either community. But many of you have a sense of what you think the community wants. But we have to hear from the community. We do. We do. Rochester, this is what we want. Then it may be another committee that comes forward and says, okay, you said you wanted this and you said you wanted this. We've refined the numbers. This is now how much it costs to have this. Can we afford it? Can we do it? I think we're trying to bite off too large of a piece of a very complex problem. Or instead, I think we need to break it down into smaller pieces. And I would agree with Lindy, I think it's essential that we get out to the communities of Stockbridge and Rochester soon with what we have clearly explained and uh, clearly defined perhaps. The other thing I'd like to say while we're on camera, I'd like to take responsibility for this. There was a point in the building committee when I said something that I think could, uh, took us off track a little bit. And I'll restate it this way. I'm still firmly committed to the fact that we have to get the Rochester program in a single building. But I do not know how to do that because neither building, as it exists right now, gives us the opportunity to do art, music, physical education, cafeteria, and lunch. We don't have a multi-purpose room here, like, like, like we have here. It would take X amount of dollars to reconfigure that high school gym into a multi-purpose room. I don't know if that's how the communities want to spend their money. So I think we're trying to do more than we need to do prematurely. I think we have a set of facts to the extent that we have them. We need to get out to our, co our colleagues and friends and relatives in our communities and say, tell us what you think. And some of that feedback will be passionate. Some of that feedback will be pointed. But I think we can't go much further without hearing from the, from the folks in the two towns. I, I, I have to concur with, I mean, as a committee member, my opinion from the committee would, would, would be that I don't see that the committee, if we got together and, 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 and sat down and did a lot more, we're going to answer some of the questions because again, one of the things that that plan did was it didn't look at how you could, you know, it said let's build an extension on the elementary school. Let's not look at how to repurpose that that uh, that room. And, you know, yeah, the numbers could be up or down, but the idea that Stockbridge, you know, the, the, the cost of, of, of doing the minimum to Stockbridge is one-tenth the cost of doing the minimum to the Rochester Elementary School, and it's a bunch more than that to do, to do it to the, to, to, to the high school does bring up a question that, and again, you're right, Tim Pratt, we're not talking about bonding and what rates we're going to get and what that's going to do to our tax rate, but just the, 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 one of the things the community has to have explained to them is that, you know, there's, there's, there, 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 there's a, 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 a big inequity in terms of the, the, the condition of, of the campuses in the two towns. And what does the, the community want to do about that? And I think, you know, that's a conversation that, yeah, it, it is somewhat, somewhat rushed, but we need to start it because I don't think, as a committee, we can do more without saying, oh, you know, I don't feel like we said, and correct me if I'm wrong, everyone who was in the meeting, especially since I missed the last one, was sick as a dog, but I don't know that the committee felt like we had a good set of things we wanted to go back to Black River Design and say, refine this. Right. Tell us what it would cost to, 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 to give us a back of the napkin estimation of doing a renovation on the building, the elementary school building versus building an addition to it so it can keep a gym. Um, right. And you know, it, it, whether, the, the, whether the Rochester community cares about that, um, or not as a conversation I think you know we should be having with them but I think we need to, to, to get out in front of people and say you know here's the things here's the stuff we don't know we don't we don't have a good student student uh, 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 population projection we, we we only have these these information about really doing full re full renovations to the building we don't know what the costs of uh, or, or how you know uh, what the costs of, of education going forward are going to be or if, or if uh, we're going to maintain, you know, the small schools grant that they say they're maybe taking away that we thought had perpetuated. We're at 18, we're at 18 minutes right now. Out of the uh, out of 20. So I would say, oh, sorry. Can I, this is a different, different thing, and I would like to make it a charge to the building committee not to deal with numbers, 
not to deal with additions. I would charge you to come up with the three key questions we need to ask our communities. Even if they're difficult. Yeah, I think, what are, and, 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 you know, this is it. What are the questions that I touch on this? No, but I'm just saying, uh, yeah, and we'll get there, but I just want to finish this. Um, you know, Rob, you said there's something underneath, and you said this, you know, there, there's something beyond these buildings that we're talking about here. And I think the only way you get to that is by really figuring out what you want to know from your community. Right. There. That takes, and I think that is a very specific charge to give you that I think you could go and be successful. But I think the first question is, with the budget you're working on right now, can we afford to increase it by the amounts of money that we're talking about? On top of it, like are we, the budget you are working on right now, with the expenses we have right now, which is putting people right at the edge of their budgets, their personal budgets, can we add on to it that much more? And in the town of Stockbridge, can we add 40% of a huge, we're talking a million dollars, to renovate one of the buildings in, in Rochester, one of them, and ours is 100 or something. So I'm scared to think of doing 100 thousand dollars adding that to our little budget I can't imagine also doing for 40 percent of theirs that's the question where are we at our own budget for this coming year and adding on top of that mm -hmm. and I know it's a bond and that doesn't necessarily go in the budget it still has to get paid great and I think well, we go back to what the community yeah. values and oh. we need to have this conversation right. to find out what really everybody getting, feels and so that's I'm exactly really it going to the core and, and we were promised things, and I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we were promised things, and we can't have those extra things because now we have to worry about refabbing buildings that haven't had any updates or, or repairs in years, and yet we have tried here. So it's, it's, it's a subsidizing of one town by the other. If you, if you look at it, you take your question large, which is, can we afford to have a school? I mean, if you look at these figures, that, you're right. Can that we is, afford to have a school? That is that's our a big one. Well, no, right. I mean, well, and, and I mean, I think there are some truths that I, 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 I don't know that we have this in writing anywhere, but um, it's certainly been stated whether these schools will ever be allowed to separate. Even if that was the will of the Well, there's always choice. Um, yeah. Um, but even then, I'm not sure. You know, the state, who knows what this Department of Education is going to well, we'll decide. Well, we'll January 20th. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think uh, but I'm just saying, I think, I think you're right. I really think we're getting to a really core question here that has to ask the communities. And sure. I think that's the kind of question that never got asked in the, in the merger because we were always so worried we just had to get a merger. Well, I asked it every time to everybody. So, mm -hmm. so I think. Joanne, you mentioned a, some draft text. Is that something the committee put together, or is that the a draft? Some text. draft yeah. text yeah. you mentioned. Is that yeah, something that committee did? Hard. Can you send that around to the board? I would like to see it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, sure. I, I, I mean, I well. It's not public information yet. That's fine. I would, I would, this is my biggest concern about this report is that if it gets out, it becomes cast in cement. I just don't think it has a nuance of work. It's good. It's not. It's good. It's all true. It's good. But why do you need uh, the money then? I would say, you know, to, to your point about having gone beyond, are we dancing too fast for our shoes? You know, are we beyond our our mission? Uh, that's a really good question. And, and uh, if our mission is basically here's the here's the report, here's the price tag, go crazy, uh, then uh, then we are because. Um, but if we have a larger responsibility, which is to look at these communities in an organic sense and to understand uh, what can they really afford, what do they really want, I mean, these, yeah. these these communities are are so different. Let me I'll make a little point that, that came out to me, and and, and I'm uncomfortable because I feel like it got kind of papered over, and that's the business of using the music and. Uh, uh, art room in the high school, or the elementary school. So the, my, my reading of this afterwards, and I didn't agree with this, is that we all agree it can only be two school, two buildings. The problem with that, and I'm not talking about the functions of money, but how people feel in Rochester about art and music. And it's their building, and they pay for it, and it has to be needed. 
then how do we how do we then go to the school and say, well, here's how we're going to take care of you without building a whole new school? Uh, and and now that is going to be on the chart, that sort of conversation. But I said that was like the first thing that, that struck me that if if we have one town of Stockbridge, we're perfectly happy to have a, a facility of this kind, and another uh, community that put money into a different kind of facility. Can you put those two together, or are they, are they just incompatible? I don't know. And I think, Rob, that I, that I caused, and again, I want to take responsibility for that. I think I caused some of that confusion. When I said, I think it's, it, it's very important that we get the Rochester program in one building. What I should have said, in hindsight, reflecting back, what I should have said is, it's very important that we get out of the business of paying to maintain large spaces that we're not using. Because in the back of my mind, I was always thinking we have to provide space for art and music um, and one plan. Because I don't think anybody went into the merger thinking we're going to somehow lessen the opportunities that we're presently giving our kids. And if we can reconfigure the gym, if we can re reconfigure the high school gym, then that's one solution. To, to I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm not saying this is a rational statement. But I'm just saying it's an emotional statement. Yeah, right. I, I would agree. Let's let's uh, let Lindy go ahead. So I want to say a couple of things. One, our charge was truly just to say that the current structures, the <coughs> properties, what the problems are, and how much it's going to cost, mm -hmm. yeah. and to fix them. Bottom line, I think what you're asking for, Ethan, I completely agree with, but I think that's a whole different committee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I think it probably is. Um, and I would urge us to really move forward. And I've got to say my biggest concern, and I'm going to just keep saying it, is we're going to get to the point where a decision is going to be made because of a crisis, meaning mm -hmm. numbers are going to shift, meaning a building's going to be not usable, and all of a sudden you're paying a heck of a lot more money that's in any of this. Oh, we're wait. just not going to make good decisions. We're waiting for a boiler to fall. Is that right. a right. Right. Exactly. And that is that deferred maintenance that's been going on here, not here, 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 but in the district for a long, long time. And it needs to be. So, what action are we going to take? Are we going to take any action today? I don't know about tonight, but I'm going to make tonight. another strong plea for well, the notion that we have to get from our community what they value and how it is they want to educate their children. We, we need to hear from as many community members as we can get into a room who will come. Um, and I think we should be honest about the rough, rough, I'm going to say rough, because again, that oh, would yeah. be rough. Yeah. The rough estimation of what it could cost when things start. Right. Does the committee have a meeting scheduled right now to wrap it we up? We do not. No. We do not. We, you know, to, to, to answer the three questions, you know, we need to look at, do we still want to be merged? Can we afford to improve our buildings and still educate our kids in them in two campuses or only in one? And you know, what's the, what's the implications of not having a school at all and being full choice beyond we all just say, oh, that'll be wonderful. You know, kids will, it'll be cheaper for us. We won't have to maintain a school. Like somehow our kids will, will you know, we complain that we don't want our kids to necessarily go between these two campuses that are 11 miles apart. What is going to happen to families in our area when we're saying, okay, you're now going to go to, you know, you figure out where you're taking your kids. You want to get them to Kildin, get them there. You want to get them to Barnard, get them there. The first question was, one of the things that, that immediately came up is, do our communities really want to be merged, especially in light of some of these rough finance numbers and, 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 and the way the thing is going on? Why is a question not, what would it take to get the programming in one building in Rochester? Why is it one extreme or the other? I'm playing devil's, devil's advocate. Yeah, well, I thought, the middle, I thought the middle question that I said was about, can we afford to have schools in two buildings or in one building, which led to the third question of what's the implications of full choice? Because, yeah, two buildings versus one building is, 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 is a conversation. You're saying send all the kids to Rochester. Well, no, it's a one building. I'm not saying where that one building is. Recall we discussed in the committee building a new campus somewhere that might be cheaper than building than you dealing with these two buildings. That. And they said it was how many millions? Lots. Oh, yeah. So I, think that, that, I think that lends itself to a question that was part of the study committee that was coming up a lot during our meeting was whether or not if a school was to dissolve, whether you would want to be part of a unified district right. or you would want full choice, right. which is why 
I purposely put in to right. that, the, that divorce clause because I knew where your community stood. Right. I'm just being very unsure about the future with our population. Right. Growth. And there's no reason that's, you can't keep your school. I know that's what we need to Stockbridge could have choice if that was it. If they didn't, we don't want to pay all this money for you guys because that's what it is. And I think it's a discussion that our community has to have. Yes. Exactly. Right. So we need right. to have it sooner rather than later. Right. But I think it's a political conversation. Yeah, political conversation. Well, but these, are, it's, it's no, but these are the questions that you have to ask yeah. before you even talk about Well, we did in our building. Well, no, I'm right. saying, so it's it's larger. you have to ask the community. Yeah. So we have to bring that to the larger community. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they're very different. So how, how are we going to do that? Because it'd be nice to know before we leave tonight. So yeah. I don't think the document you have is ready to do that yet. If all that you think they needed to do was have a price tag on it and say, God bless you, it's good enough for that. But then this other step, all this complexity I keep talking about, that, that, this is it. Oh, no, you were the one that took those choices off the list. Correct. We had okay. all those things. Yes, Bonnie. Like, we 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 Lindy, Lindy and I have made a contact with a woman who does uh, community facilitation. That's how she's done it for several years. She's not necessarily interested in taking us on as we work because she has a lot of work. Um, but she is willing, Lindy and I both know her, she is willing to sit down and talk with us about a process that really starts even from your idea about being very careful about what are the questions that you're going to ask. Otherwise, you get a whole lot of feedback that isn't particularly helpful. Um, but what are the questions that you're going to ask? And wondering if the board would like us to pursue that contact and come back with this is what as well as provide a list of recommendations of who could okay, be yeah. the yeah. facilitator. Yeah. Do, yeah, no, do they have some sort of a no, template be, that yeah. you could well, use? And, and you said this process is you take the voter list and you uh, like every eighth no, person. That's one way. More about the discussion yeah. and having. Once you get them in the room. Once you get everybody. Yeah, no, I'm saying. But yeah. that is, you're right. Because uh, it needs to be very organized. I think organized. we're finally asking the right questions tonight. And I think we really are asking the right questions. Joanne? I'd like just to make one comment that um, it keeps being brought up that stock, like Rochester's about the music and the arts and all that, and Stockbridge is too. We just love did not all respect. We love it. But you have to stop saying that because we have both there. We no, I really be, before we have a community meeting. No, but you said it a million times, and I need to say this: our community loves music too. We're not fine when it comes to that. So I would appreciate not bringing that up. You kind of kind of insulting? Yes. I did, because you brought it up every okay. time. Okay. We're, 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 we're going to, I think we need to. Our culture loves music, too. I never would, I don't think anyone on this board would say that your town doesn't well, like Well, I think that's so why, it. but that's the reason we're told that that's why you want to keep the auditorium specialty music room and things like that where it's more important to your town than it would be to our town. I just, I just wish we could. I don't think that's a message that, 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 yeah. that's been given out. And I understand you're very upset. And not that I don't, I have never, I, I have not personally heard that there has been a comparison that one town is refined and one town is, one that, that, that says that Stockbridge is full of, of knuckle dragging mouth breathers. We're not, we're not unrefined. I mean, this is a, no one has said the stoppage is unrefined. It isn't a value judgment. We're also off Yes, I think, let me, the thing, the point that I wanted to finish with is I think it's very important that we remember in all these meetings that we are all here to solve a problem. We are all here expecting that everyone has their best intentions, that, that we respect each other, and that we understand that we're all trying to pull together to solve a problem and not to, and, 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 and not to exploit one side or put one side up or put one side down. Except every time it goes in one direction, it's pulled right back. I, uh, I, I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't, I don't, I don't perceive that, and I don't believe that many of the other committee members did. But I think things are passionate and tough, and um, while statements, statements may not be made in, with negative intentions, I think sometimes they come when you're, when you're passionate about what's going on, which everybody in the room is passionate about what's going on, moving forward. It's not meant to be said that way, but sometimes it does feel like 
it gets a little us versus them. I hear you. Yeah. And I hear what is what one place has the other place doesn't and it's because such and such. And it, I don't think that's anyone's intentions. I want to be really clear about that. But I do think that we're getting if we don't Move forward. We're going to keep having the same can you, that's can, you that, can you speak to that? Can you speak to that that woman and have a recommendation for our meeting on the twenty third? I know it's supposed to be mostly about budget, but if we could, you if you could, if you could see, you you talk to her and she says you were to have want to have a meeting, a series of meetings that are structured like this. You're going to want to do that. You're going to want to get a consultant on board before you do that. And here's a short list of consultants you should be yes. talking to have your mediated conversation. Yes. But just so that, because what I'd really like to be able to do is at our, at our February meeting, once, we, once we're, you know, you, you've given us that information and, we've, and on the 23rd, we can maybe schedule when or, or start laying out how we're going to follow that, that advice or what we're going to do. Because I, I very much think that the, the, the building committee can't, cannot do any more quality work with that document and, our, and the initial charge. They're pretty much, again, how that report comes out you know, in, in its final form is, is, is one thing, but I really think the conversations that we got so mired in around choice, around um, uh, uh, things like that, you know, that's not what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to look at a, at a Black River Design Report and analyze that. So I think getting recommendations so we could have the community we meetings so would be good. So the numbers that we came up with and pulled from those? Sure, we'll put, we'll put together. The those numbers can be used in our presentation because they're glaring. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. I think that, I, what I got, I believe so. What I got out, and correct me if I'm wrong, but what I got out was that the, 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 Rob was saying putting out the document or putting it into the minutes now without having a conversation around it is just something that's going to be... Inflare a lot of, of well, we were, miscommunication. But if we don't have, and you have to have numbers, Rob, that's going to be the first right. thing that people will that's ask for. Numbers. Well, we're not gonna, they're not going to be correct, but they'll, they but should be in both part. I'm happy that these numbers, they're an estimate. But I think there's another document that's needed between this, this document and the meeting, public meeting. Something that's narrative that lets people know the complexity of this and what the sure. deal is. Something that's, um, and we can, we, can, we can craft that while we get information on how to have our community meetings. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree with the, 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 you know, I just don't want to release the information without a narrative. I, 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 think, that, I think that already, Everything is, 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 is spinning as it is. So I think trying to trying to put together a document that says that that, that, that says what we needed to say and releasing it in advance of a public meeting is good. But I think we need to structure a public meeting, and I think we need to figure out how to have that mediated conversation because, you know, given given the way that uh, you know the the, the the committee members, you know, uh, the, the, as as you put it, got passionate having someone there. That can control the meeting and, and manage it and, uh, and, and, and deal with that and be neutral is, I think, important. Right. So I think at this point, the uh, uh, is the building the building committee is disbanded. I think we need to still uh, we need to finish the narrative and and, and, the narrative. and with the numbers and put that together. But yeah, I think the next step is to. That discusses that discusses more than just. You know the numbers that, that, that points out things that these numbers do not include. The, the, you know these numbers do not include uh, more of a renovation plan. They include more of a expansion addition plan, for example. Um, I think it's important to remember that a lot of people. Have, you know, I mean, we've been talking about it. A lot of people have no idea. Not you know these numbers would be tremendously shocking. The idea that you're going to say, well, do you can you afford school? That's a huge question. That's a huge question. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and so you don't need any numbers. Yeah, we do need something. Yeah, no, I, I agree, but I think I think talking about the, the, the questions about the school and all that. Well, more the question is, is what direction we want, do we want to go? Since we didn't find out anything that really said, aha, we need to go in this direction because this is way cheaper than going in this direction, I think we need to find out what do we value? What do people want to do right. philosophically with our education? What do we want to see for the education of our Which is a community conversation and right. not a building committee conversation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, could I just add one more thing? Sure. When, before our meeting with the community, could we ask Tara to pull all the expenses for each building? Like, um, each sure. She had, she, we had asked for that, we had asked for that two meetings ago. I think that that's a really important number to get out to a renovation. And that, yes, that's, I, that's for right now. 
just the running of the building. The running of what we're spending in Rochester currently for fuel so far with, up until this December was seventy thousand nine hundred. I have a um, five thousand three hundred. I have a beginning of a spreadsheet. Yep. That does have the last um, right. historical years. Um, that, that, that we can work on to, to be able to pull out that information. Well, if anything, it shows it shows you know the the, the folly of running two buildings at once, you know, heating an empty building. Point is good one, and I'm going to say this: I, I think it would be a folly on our part to assume we can move in any meaningful direction without facts, facts, facts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Some I, I want to say this just because I know I'm on camera doing it. It was a good point. I'm sure some people are sitting there thinking seventy thousand dollars in fuel oil in Rochester, and it's not even halfway through the winter. That's part of what some people think. That's right. What you need to understand is it's a ten thousand gallon fuel tank that was just filled up at the cost of thirty thousand dollars, so it'll carry. But I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. that, 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 that. I'm just no, saying we not. have to have the facts. We have to have a full picture of what we're talking right. about, so not just throwing numbers out so that exactly. we. Exactly. We just have to back up what we're saying. Yeah. Great. So can we can we uh, reach out to Tara and get and, and get those numbers so I we can put them into the docket? No, I, I, I understanding the month I, understanding I, monthly I, maintenance costs is good. I have those. I, I have um, I have documents to to process that information. Great. Um, okay then, um, let's move on to uh, belatedly the annual report committee. Oh. Um. How are you guys but doing down there? This is, this is how I work, um, not with projections or anything like yeah. that. Uh, so I, I take, we take it, speak for this committee. I don't think we've actually ever met. But we have talked. Um, uh, uh, we should talk more the other morning. Yeah. Two, we have two directives. Um, one is clarity. But this is a clearer report. They understand everything they're looking at and what it means. And the second is education, that we inform the people. This should be a booklet that they can open up and they're going to learn about things like that the SU budget is voted on in late December, early January. These are open meetings that you can go to. The SU meeting is, is the, a SPED meeting the budget is usually voted out at the same time. These are things that I never knew before I joined the school board. And we must, be we must educate our policy. I feel like the first thing is that when they open the book, there should be a big notice here saying, the numbers we are vo voting on are on these color-coded pages. The numbers we are voting on are, red, are on the red pages, or the red <coughs> you know, pages like that. The yellow pages are budgets, numbers that are already been voted on and are set. So some very uh, the SU, stuff like some that. a very user friendly. Yeah, absolutely, user -friendly. Yeah, but right at the beginning, it should not start with a warning. I think it should start with an explanation. I think it should also have a table of contents, mm -hmm. page numbers. So because I remember last time, you know, we Is have it not in the, well, that one. That, that, that one has one. No, it does. Um, but uh, a better yeah, one. I would even rewrite them. A better. They're a little confusing to me. Right, just so, try to make it a lot more user friendly to really absolutely. have the lay person to be able to really understand what they're looking at and what they're looking for yep. when they're trying so to read this. Every page, and I've taken a lot of this from what I remember yeah. what you said, Rob, every page says what it is beyond just I know, tuition projections. What does this mean? This is what we pay for each of these students to go to another school in this area. Students can go to any school they want. All this kind of educational information that we I've learned over this time. Mm -hmm. um, where I need help, and I think it's probably sitting down with Tara or Amy, is some of these pages where we're talking about percentages. This is Tara provides that unified page. district revenue budget. And it's all the percentages and where things come from and what is it. And but you want an explanation. Ah, yeah. yeah. These things, these pages are, are deaf okay. for us. And they need to come out. Now, obviously, we break down. We want to put in a description of what happens. We want to put in a description so that we know what it says. Uh, board treasurer, no, where's the, There's a big one here that's like a big, huge number. And it's like, these are all the main teacher salaries. It doesn't say that. It's just a big number that suddenly says regular ed instruction. Right. So this is the kind of thing we, we want to put in here. Again, this page, the Rochester Stockford Union estimated tax rate. It's just good to 
put a little explanation on that. We need a glossary. Um, I think probably a glossary. It, it can't hurt. It can't hurt to have more than you need. Great. Um, this, the, the last thing I think that would be very useful of this is that when you turn, I think there should be a clear demarcation that we are now into the supervisory union amounts, and there mm -hmm. should be a title page that says, from here on in, we're dealing with different stuff. And it's already done. What? Like, and it's already done. Well, that, that's going to be in a whole introduction to the supervisory union budget when it's voted on who votes on it. Because I never heard about a full board. I think you ought to put the statute in there that basically tells people how it needs to be voted. Uh, I think that that'd be useful just so they know that. But then yeah. also, more than the statute, put it in normal language. <laughs> um, um, so here's the other part. Um, I think we should have a map at the beginning of the SU that actually shows what other schools are part of our district. Cool. Because I bet a lot of people don't know. Yep. That's why a lot of people have no idea what other schools are involved. And then when you have these percentages, F, B, F, BUD, G, HUD, you know, whatever, um, they'll actually know what schools those are talking about. Okay? That's a great um, idea. Uh, then, yeah, um, I don't know. That's right. This was added. I don't know where I wrote Valentine. Can I ask you Yes, good. Um, something I think that would be, like, because the SU budget did increase, if we could just get, like, a... Just like kind of when we put our budget, your budget into our budget pamphlet, it would be good to just kind of like, this year we had increases because we hired an accountant to take care of. Yes, just so there's some exactly. of these, why did this increase this much? Well, it's like because we have these costs that we really need to do. We need really to spend the money so we are more efficient in our work at the central office. I just think something as simple as that to let them know like why that number went up. Also, because um, I know this was confusing to me last night, is suddenly we're seeing 4.6% increase in the supervisor union budget, 9% increase or almost 9% increase in the spend budget, but then we're only asking for a tuition hike of 3%. I mean, that's the kind of thing I'm going to notice and wonder, wait, how is that possible? And I think we need to make sure, and this will be the proofing of this once I have this sort of marked up. Now, one of the problems I see with this is that already these pages are pretty dense. And if we're putting text yeah. on top of them, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how how just the layout of it's going to work. Maybe we're going to have to have extra pages. Well, I don't know if you can do this. So I was going to say, <coughs> like, my, like my note, everything you're asking for, I had all written out in the notes. Like that's what we have when we build the budget. Mm -hmm. We're happy to put that in there so people know. That would be great. But it's yeah. on like a oh. yeah. eleven by seven. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's so being I, generous. Well, I think, and I, this is a design, it's a design issue okay. that I think we, maybe if we put extra pages in, that will help. But I do think you really need stuff that's right <coughs> on the page, which means, you know, we may have to send requests for some of these budgets to be slightly altered. Or, I mean, I don't know how small they can be before, you know, maybe we'll know we have this much room for extra text on the SU page because we can get it and it's still in red and readable. Well, I think the, the, the big thing that, that, in my experience, has always been that most every budget book is a, is, is a last minute thing from getting stuff from the, the business office in the past. It's always been, I mean, oh, like dated a few years ago, that was, you know, but so I think the big thing is what, what we need to figure out and you need to think about, we need to tell Tara, you need to give us the information on these dates, on, you know, well, on now these that these budgets, these two budgets have been approved. We can start building our book around those budgets and figure that out. And I think, um, uh, 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 we'd love if somebody would donate some. I mean, I'm, I've done some design work. Oh, this is one thing I was going to request from you too. Could you request from your teacher's pictures? Oh, we have tons of pictures. Yeah, um, just to start sending me, like maybe edit and send me some great pictures for the cover again, because I'm happy to do the cover again. But I do think um, layout-wise, what I'm hoping is that by the, by the, my goal is by next meeting, yeah, we would want by the next, not the special meeting, the February meeting, we would have a layout of this, even rough pages, and then we figure out how we design it. Because our meetings in early May, early May, right? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. so we're looking for this to be mid-April, this to be fully designed by mid-April, correct? 
Well, no, it'd have to be, no, you have to, yeah, it has to go out, what, two weeks beforehand or 10 days? It has to be 10 days. Well, well I think it's always better. Well, I also think it benefits us to get it out, get it out as soon as possible. Yeah, I think you right. can. You had a, you had a, uh, I think it's a window of open. Okay. You had the uh, sheet that Tara gave you about what they were doing. Oh, yeah, I've got that, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just, this is how I work, actually. Ethan, let me ask you another question. I wedded into pictures because I've seen um, annual reports that look really neat when you have a student art, when kids actually Oh, I'm happy, I'm happy with that. I mean, we did pictures last year, and it was all about the unification of two groups together. Um, I would love to cover this whole thing with student art, even the back. So that might be a, an option. Of sure, the sure, absolutely. And Can be creative, leave, be creative that way. We leave that up to Lindy and I. Is that okay for us? Sure. To be able to sure. Be yeah. Decide what you want. I mean, I'll, I'll do you some both? final editing of that. You can do a combination if that makes sense. Um, okay. But well, I think that achieves. That sounds really great. I, okay. I, I don't. I don't have any further yeah. direction yeah. for you. That's yeah. what you're looking at. Yeah. Um, yeah. Something with. <laughs> so, uh, He's been in my dreams. Yeah. Hmm. Reading. I want kids reading. Reading, right? Reading. Yeah. Um, um, I, yeah, I'm ordering that, please. He wants to <laughs> Oh, oh and, and, and those graphics you showed last night um, that um, you should use them. Yeah, you should have them yeah, in the yeah. report somewhere. And they'll be better by yeah. the time we get to yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. So um, yeah, definitely um, bar graphs, pie graphs, anything like that we can use are so much easier columns of numbers. So any place, Bruce, and I would just encourage any place we think, Amy, any place you look at a budget and you think, we could do a, a pie chart. Pie chart for the supervisory union who's putting in mon how much money, see how much Bethel is, see how small our little part is, that would be a very good visual. That's a good visual. I that's think that's really great. Yeah. Are you creating a pie chart or are you asking for I'm saying do it now. That's a Bruce. That's that would be a Yeah, no, that's a Right, I mean, that's something Tara could win. Just you're saying as we're as we're going through stuff, if we think that this yes. if there's data that we feel could be um, visualized. visualized better than let's Absolutely. try to um, go down that avenue and Absolutely. get that information. There's a pie chart for your financial software will do once you put your budget together and you yep. find your groups and show you what percentage of your budget is direct instruction, what's uh. administration, what's so useful. That would be great. That would be so useful. I, I really want this. I want. I, I, my standard is nothing less than a model of what annual report should be. Yeah, that's great. And then, and then that, you know, that other people sort of go, "What? That's an annual report. It should look nothing like this, and it should be visual and engaging and frankly, and they should leave educated, better educated, which will make our job so much easier." I think that's great. Yay, Ethan. Yeah, that's you great idea. It's wonderful. And maybe you can get excited about our schools. Oh Parish for this. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And in six minutes, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. Nine no, point. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you live nine point three. The table is Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she didn't show up. It was, it was the, the one planet. One planet and the and we're the space. Yeah, we're nowhere near to and I did chat with Carrie about okay. what our intention was in that report versus how it might come across. So I Good. took the one thing. I think that probably settled before. Okay. Nine point four. Nine point four generator. Okay. Oh, Deep cut. Is that is that how you say his name or her name? Deepka, or well, how do you say the person's name? Generator file. The person that's giving us the generator. So I was really oh. the contacts, <laughs> and the contacts arranging the deal. So okay. um, the community yep. member, Caitlin, who was here, I think, two months ago, last time in November. Sorry, can I just yes. wait for a second? I want to pass the chocolate pie again. I think we just ripped them all. <laughs> It was a long meeting last night. Okay, so. Okay, so she has been working, uh, communicating, um, and basically the generator has been inspected. It's bigger than what we would need, and the person who's selling it is asking for $6,900 for it. What are my next? 
I, and how, how much um, do we, have to, we have to hire somebody to install it? Right, which I don't know what that, I would have to look back on that. Well, do we know the condition of it? Is it new? How old is it? Inspected and only used for one year. Is it for a is, is, is this the, this is Caitlin, yeah. It's the one that was at Right, right, but there was also, there was also, I got an email that I assume was the same generator from a woman named Dietka Fowler. And it might be. Saying an 8.5 kilowatt thing that she doesn't, that uh, they decided not to go the LP route at all, so they wanted to donate it or sell it at a low price. Yeah. Stephen B. Okay. Uh, average rating is it eight kilowatt generator? Uh, eight, eight or eighty? Eighty. Okay, because this is this is an eight point five kilowatt home generator. So that, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> ten times. <laughs> Okay, and that sounds and like where our quote was. Uh, and that was based on the sale price from another service. Um, and the service was performed with up to date operation value evaluation by Brookside Service and is prepared and ready to be moved. So Brookside, oh, the Brookside, Brookfield. Brookfield. I think they need Brookfield. But yeah. Anyway. So the, the people that we were looking at, the gen talking to about a generator, I have inspected this one. Right. And, and have given it a, a thumbs up. Right. Okay. Are you going to try to find somebody that can inspect it before you? I mean, I if you were to buy it, inspect ask it for the before Brookfield. you buy it. What? what? Give you some feedback yeah. on whether it's worth that. Yeah. Like well, I mean, used to do the the maintenance here, or the helped us with all the. Uh, Jim Shans. Yeah. That guy. I can see if he if 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 uh, he could take a look at it. I think we also would want to make sure that whatever we buy can actually fit into the electrical system. In my very previous lives, the school bought a generator, got it to the school, the generator passed inspection, all that stuff was good for me. I, I can't explain this, I can just tell you about how the electrical system in the building could not receive the generator. Hmm. That would be good to know. Yeah. That would be very good to know. <laughs> so is Brookfield Service some a company that would install the, a uh, used generator on our site? This is one of those permission to move forward. Right. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 this place, so. Could, uh, I, I, I mean, what do we, what do you, what do you think our next step should be? <laughs> I, I guess the next step I'm asking for is permission to see how much it costs to be moved and if it really Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, so I Permission, so here's my frustration. We tried, Jim Chans and I tried to go through the grant process and got. Nowhere. Nowhere. I feel like this seems like a really good local opportunity. As, mm -hmm. it, it, and, it, and honestly, my generator experience is like none. <laughs> um, like, other than it better work when it's all done. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like to move forward to really pursue how much it would cost to move it and install it and say that we would potentially put it on that January 23rd date because I feel like this family's kind of waiting for us to yeah and let's if, if you could if you could get us that information so we could we could we could we could do that and yeah. you know Jim would probably okay with, you know because now we're talking about that's going to be a chunk of change coming out of this year's budget out of this year's budget Right. And how much was it then? That has, that, that theoretically is, we're starting with a, a quarter million dollar super, surplus. Yeah. And even if that surplus was, was some of the restricted funds, the restricted funds were the place we were thinking about <coughs> paying for the, the, the generator all along. Yeah. I just uh, right. I want to make sure that if we're prepared to move, we're prepared to pay. Okay. I think with the right, with the. Selectmen say that they would help you? They wanted us to go through the grant process. I haven't even approached the select 
board about this new deal. What about the um, private funds in town? Would that be something that meaning that trustee? Yeah, the trustee would probably put yeah. it in. Since it's a real community project, right. it's for everyone, not just the school. Maybe that's something that could give us a little bit more. It seems like it's a good price, and if we can continue. Um, with the rest of the path, it being as yeah. as good of a price, better than Brookfield. See what the um, that initial quote that we got. I think we should continue to pursue it. I, I mean, do too. I mean, we just yeah. need to make sure we're crossing all of our T's and and everything. Like like um, Bonnie was saying, it, the building can receive it, or what additional work needs to be done for for it to receive it. And um, you know, the, we're going to need to put a pad down for it. You know, right. like. By the time we get all that done, um, are we still less than what uh, buying a new one would be? Right. And you said 80, 80 kilowatts? Yes. 80, that yeah. The um, Brookfield's one that we were looking at was um, 48 right. kilowatts for, for 28,000 seconds. How old is this? A year. A year. Oh, two. wow. So why don't we move forward? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Get away. I was expecting like 20 years or something like that. What Can you goal? make a motion yeah. that says we'd like you to move forward pending this, 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 and this, and if those things check out? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I make a motion. So that they sure. don't wait any longer. Oh, yeah, that's to move forward pending this, this, this. Um, do we need? <laughs> do we need? <laughs> wait, wait. Thank you. I would entertain. Uh, do we need? Do we need to identify the funding source at this point? No. Okay. Um, we've discussed that there is uh, potential funding sources that are <coughs> in. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. <coughs> Did I first? Um, I'll make a motion to instruct the generator committee. <laughs> this is the administration. Um, <laughs> Please, you can be a committee. You can make t-shirts. Um, the generator <laughs> committee <laughs> to <laughs> pursue purchase or pursue purchase of a used generator pending, <coughs> pending uh, approval by the installers, something like that. Is that something? Pending confirmation of the uh, the inspection of the unit yes. and uh, and uh, a compatibility compatibility with our electrical system and, and the price of installation and the price of installation. Oh. Okay. Those things I think so. Jenny, I said good. <laughs> All right. A motion has been made and seconded, and uh, we would love it if you could report back out to us on the 23rd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I don't get that right. That was good. Oh, no, okay. I'm okay. worried about like, getting to our list. Just... Tom moderator. Um, <laughs> By the way, can I just take a quick moment, Lenny and Bonnie? Can we just acknowledge Jenny, please? Oh, uh, her note-taking? She is... just does great <laughs> note-taking. Really yeah, I mean, seriously. Now that we embarrassed her. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> um, all right. Do you want one of your chocolates back? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Well. Um, so those are our discussion items. We have no. We have no action <laughs> items. We have our, uh, our second public comment uh, session. Does the public have anything more to say? Uh, I'll um, volunteer to write a draft of this sort of intermediary document for everybody to look at it whenever you want. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, okay. The board is going to go into uh, executive session to, to discuss a uh, personnel matter. Can I just ask one quick question? Sure. Does anybody have any idea if there are laws about, I know there has to be about what it includes, but there's probably some laws about what these things have to be, right? No. It has to have it has to have the warning in it, that which is like that first page. So warning. Does it know where it has to be or anything like that? Do we know? Uh, it needs to be provided to all residents uh, within ten days of the Do annual you know meeting. Who's where this is? No, physically, like in the. Um, oh. I'll have to look it up. Okay. If you could take a moment and just. There was not a lot of restrictions. I I, okay. I thought. I'm um, gonna ask how packed the weight of it. 
your yeah, finished cost. project. True. Yeah. So because if you're going to mail them out, there may be a limit. Right. I mean, this so, is thin compared to our town. Room. And what you're going to it sounds like you're going to have it a lot thicker. So yeah. you don't want to have it. By the way, so, I've so got the, five years of town reports in my office that you could look through to get some ideas about what's good. What's yeah. not breaking new ground here, man. So, um, <laughs> the, the Secretary of State, uh, the, the, the Vermont Secretary of State, is the, the person that manages all that kind of stuff. Um, and I recall vaguely seeing something there in the Vermont League of City and Towns that kind of talked about what should be in your annual report booklet. Okay. And I think probably that will have tips and tricks as well as statutory requirements. But like I said, I'm pretty sure it was on the Secretary of State's page. Uh, and the other yeah. place you can find some information, I'm sure, is uh, the Vermont School Boards Association. Yeah. I'm sure they have a little module on annual reports. Yeah. Uh, and to uh, Joanne's point about the weight of it, yes. um, I believe you have a copy of this from previous years, which is basically the receipt of what it costs to send our um, to send it out. Uh, and it, this was not that report. This was the report before it in, yeah. in 18, and it was um, 0.245 pounds. And they sent out seven, so 700 pieces. The total weight of all that we sent was um, 171 pounds, and it was $210. Thank okay. you. That was um, so Just so I you might, know that it, it we you might know. check with the town. And, and that was probably black and white. What there's way. There's this is not nothing to do with the printing. This is oh, okay. this was the cost of mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is not the cost of the spalding to to right. print it. I have that. That's separate. This is just the cost of mailing. The the actual mailing of it. There is of course the additional bulk postal permit we have to make sure is up to date, or it's annually I have to renew it. Which also I think answers your question about. Um, I think you, you yeah. PTO. Okay. Um, all right. That was, I guess, item 12 other. So now uh, the board is going to go into executive session to, uh, to uh, uh, hear a personnel matter. Uh, we will uh, be adjourning when we come out from that. Our next meeting is, uh, there's a meeting, uh, a special meeting on uh, J January 23rd at 6.30 here at Stockbridge Central School. The next regular meeting of the, of the uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District is February 4th at the Rochester campus at 6.30. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.